differentiate ourselves. Now, a study by Harvard showed that out of 51 different categories of product, 46 out of the 51 were commoditized. That means people bought based on price because those 46 categories of companies sold based on price. And you're, you're going to get business, sure, but only until the competitor cuts their price and then the customers switch to them. Let's have a look at liquor stores. There's the outside of two liquor stores. I can't see any reason why I should pick one out of the other, can you? They both look totally unappealing. They all look exactly the same. Unless you differentiate yourself. So if you want to be successful, you've got to get 80% repeat customers or word of mouth. So how do you do that? First way is awesome customer service. You've got to really knock people's socks off. Let's have a look. This is PricewaterhouseCoopers. 45% of the contribution to driving business growth is awesome customer service where customers walk out and say, wow, that was great. And if you look at the differences between 2000 and 2012, customer service is now 11 points more important and advertising and promotion is six points less important. Customer service leaders, people who give awesome customer service can charge nine to 13% more for exactly the same product as their competitors are not matching that service. So what are you doing to give every single person that walks in that door an awesome experience? 59% of the contribution to your return on investment is from customer service. 14% is from advertising and promotion. How many of you have got four times that budget for customer retention? Nobody! The big companies have, the successful companies have. Why well, haven't you? So let's keep going with understanding the fundamentals. You've got to understand what business you're in. It's really important. Now, the one I picked here, a hardware store. Hands up if you think hardware stores are in the hardware business. Most of you do. How many of you woke up this morning and said, Today I've got to buy a hammer? <laughs> Anybody? Nobody. Maybe in their right mind wants to buy a hammer. Why do you go to a hardware store? Because you want to solve a problem. The people aren't buying hardware, people are buying solutions to problems that they've got. Sales went through the roof because they suddenly realised what business they were in. Now you can't connect with your customers unless you know precisely what business you're in. Now you, you've got to develop a value proposition based on how you differentiate yourself from your competitors. What do you stand for? My son goes to university in, um, in Washington DC and his classmates, his peers, they buy off people that are giving something back. They buy off people that share their values. It needs to be part of your DNA. You need to be seen by the community, greater community, doing something that they relate to. It's about thinking a little bit differently. Now, one of the most powerful tools you can have in your armory is called the consumer purchasing benefit. It increases first, first brand recall in people's mind. It's the first thing you think of. So what's your CPB? Why should people buy from you? It can't be price. Because price is not a value proposition. Emotion. One of the things that too many of us don't realise is that science has proven that every single decision we make is made emotionally. Then we will justify it pragmatically, but initially we will make that decision emotionally. How many of you have been to Disneyland? So we, a week before we say to our kids, in a week we're going to go to Disneyland. What's the first thing they do? Oh, dang it, how many more sleeps was that? Now, they haven't been to Disneyland yet. They don't know what the hell it is. But they're 
very excited about going there. You get to Disneyland, and what's the first thing you see? A line. And it's not just a little line, it's a ripper. But that's okay, this is the happiest place on earth. <laughs> then you get to the gate, and they say, two adults, two children, $240, and you go, what? <laughs> oh, that's all right, happiest place on earth. No problem. So then you go on the ride, three minutes later, it's over. The average person that goes to Disneyland, it's a true story, stands in line for six hours and 20 minutes. And what do you say when you leave? Wasn't that fantastic? <laughs> what are we going in next week? Emotion. They've been selling the same PPB, happiest place on earth for 60 years. It's penetrated everybody. But they've stuck with it over and over and over again. And it works. Anybody here drive Mercedes? Why do you drive Mercedes? Why do women wear makeup? Hope. <laughs> I hope I can look better than I do when I get out of bed. That's emotion. Every single thing you do is about emotion. So where's the emotion in yourself? If we want to stay in business for the long haul, we can get more efficient. You know, we can have more efficient warehousing, we can have more efficient everything, we can negotiate better prices, but at the end of the day, we're still selling based on price. And there ain't no future in selling based on price. So you have to find a way to differentiate yourself. Now that, is, as a company, you need to differentiate yourself, and your own stores. If you're in a town with five competitors, and two of them are big guys and aren't going away anytime soon, you need to find a way to be closer to the community, to develop some affinity with the community where they want to support you rather than supporting the big guys. So you need to look at the way you advertise. You need to look at the way you position yourself, how you communicate with your customers, how you make sure that you continue to communicate with your customers and continue to develop a database and relevance. You know, it's all right to have a fantastic database of product and what's moving where and when and how and why. That's great, but the most important database you can develop is about people. Where and when and what and why and how. <laughs> Thank you.